All right, next on the docket here, classic concept in this chapter that students either love or hate, and most hate, uh, it's called inclined planes. We just have a plane on an incline, and it's inclined up at some angle theta. So let's set up our free body diagram. What forces are acting on that box up on that plane? Gravity, which way is gravity point? Down, Down. great. And what else? We have a perpendicular contact force here called the normal force. So we got a normal force as well. That's all you have. Now, potentially, if this is a frictionless surface, that's all you have. But if it's not frictionless, then you're gonna have a friction force. To know which way that points, you'd have to know if this thing is either moving or if it's just sitting there or something like that. In this case, we don't know that yet because I haven't told you, but if this thing was sliding down the ramp, then friction would point up the ramp. If I was pushing this thing up the ramp, then friction would point down the ramp. If this thing was just sitting there, then you'd have static friction, and which way would it point? It would be up the ramp still, because there's a force, part of gravity points down the ramp. And if there's no friction, this thing wants to slide down the ramp. So if it's just sitting there, it must be the friction, static friction, as you pointed out in this case, pointing up the ramp, canceling that out, so to speak. Okay, so if you look at this lovely thing, so gravity here, the weight, has two components. So oftentimes what we do on a problem like this is we define x and y a little differently. And so we set our axes up like this. So instead of the normal x horizontal and y vertical, we often create a totally new set of axes here where the new x, if you will, is going up and down the incline and the y is exactly perpendicular to that, which is in the direction that the normal force points. And if we set this up, then normal force is great, right? It points in the direction of our new Y, if you will. But what's wrong with our weight here? Yeah, it's got components in both the new X and the new Y. And so we're gonna have to break that thing up into components here. And in this case, I'm gonna break that up into a right triangle. And so here I can look at my new X component and my new Y component, and they're gonna be related to MG, in this case, either MG sine theta or MG cosine theta, and we have to figure out which one. Well, here's what I'm gonna tell you. This theta right here, if you use a triangle that's not looking 245-ish, you know, not too isosceles-ish, uh, it's easier to see, but this angle theta right here is this angle theta right there. We'll come back to showing you how in the world you see that in a minute. But getting that, then this new x component, is that the opposite side or the adjacent side to theta? Ooh, it's opposite. And so this is actually gonna be mg sine theta. And this guy right here, the adjacent side is mg cosine theta. If you recall, we normally set up a problem. As long as you had the angle with respect to the x-axis, then normally if you had a vector pointing you know, somewhere in the middle that had an x component and a y component, what would you use to get the x component? The cosine of the angle. What would you use to get the y component? The sine of the angle. On the incline though, referencing theta as the angle of the incline relative to the horizontal, actually now we're gonna use sine theta to get the new x component of the weight and cosine theta to get the new y component of the weight. Good times. So how in the world do you see that that is angle theta? I don't care if you really can't see this. I don't care if you can never recreate this, but we're gonna see that angle theta once really quickly. So if I hold two markers, just like so, and I move them around together, is the angle between them changing at all? No, as long as I move them together, the angle is not changing. So here is our angle theta. I'm gonna rotate this guy 90 degrees, that it lines up with gravity. So how far do I need to rotate this one if I want the angle between them to be back to being theta? 90 degrees. And 90 degrees to where it was pointing now points in the angle of the incline and the angle between them is indeed still theta. Again, I rotated them both 90 degrees. So it's that little angle that corresponds to the angle of the incline. Again, if you never see that again, I don't really care, but you do need the takeaway here. So if you want your free body diagram, 
what we drew in red is proper. If they ask you for a free body diagram on a question like this, you should draw what we have in red, those two forces, that's all you got. However, if you're gonna do any kind of problem solving, I would recommend you turn it into the second free body diagram that you have on your hand out there. And in this case, we have a component of our weight going down the incline, and what is that component? And in this case, mg sine theta. And we had a component going this way. I'm not too concerned about that. What's more important is we have a normal force pointing exactly the opposite direction. In this case, is there any acceleration, typically on an incline, in this perpendicular direction? What does that mean? They're equilibrium, and these would be equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. And so in this case, going the component of gravity going perpendicular here would be mg cosine theta, which means your normal force, at least its magnitude, must also equal the same magnitude, mg cos cosine theta. So, cool, this is not a proper free body diagram, but if you're about to do any kind of problem solving, I highly suggest you get here in a hurry. So if you're asked to pr produce some sort of proper free body diagram, great. If you're about to solve a problem though, and the free body diagram is just for your own new use, go straight here. Cool. So let's take a look at a couple problems. Number seven on your handout, a 10 kilogram object slides down a frictionless plane. I like frictionless. So incline 30 degrees above the horizontal. What is its acceleration? Okay, where should this thing in all likelihood be accelerating? Straight downward? No, that's the incline. Good, down the incline. So, and in this case, if we're doing problem solving and don't care about a proper free body diagram, what should the acceleration down the incline be related to? Or at least what should the force down the incline be? Mg sine theta. Since we don't have any friction, we're told it's frictionless, are there any other forces operating in that kind of up or down the incline direction? No. So in this case, we'll say that the sum of the forces equals ma. And in this case, the only force you have is mg sine 30, and that must equal ma. Cool, your m's cancel. So, and in this case, I cancel an A. I said your M's cancel, there we go. And what does your acceleration come out to? 9.8 times sine 30 is? Yeah, 4.9 meters per second squared. There's your acceleration. What would the acceleration have been if this object had weighed 20 kilograms? Same, what if it had weighed 30 kilograms? Same, so this is a property of gravity. We didn't derive this or talk about it earlier, but it's now relevant. If I drop this marker, what's the acceleration due to gravity? 9.8 meters per second squared. If I dropped a bowling ball, what would be the acceleration due to gravity? 9.8 meters per second squared. If I drop a feather, what would be the acceleration due to gravity? Really? For a feather? Air resistance. Good, it's air resistance that makes the feather slow down if you will, it's an opposing force. And it has a lot more air resistance on that feather so per se than the bowling ball or the marker would and stuff like that. But if you drop a bowling ball and a feather in a vacuum or on the moon, if you will, they fall together with exactly the same acceleration. Pretty cool with that? Mass does not matter as far as the acceleration goes. The force, yes. The acceleration, no. Gravity, don't care. <clears throat> All right, number eight. Number eight, 10 kilogram can't make that sideways, that's terrible. 10 kilogram object is at rest, incline 30 degrees again, above the horizontal. What is the force of friction acting on the object? What is the coefficient of friction? And be careful. Okay, so in this case, this thing is just sitting there this time. So what forces do I wanna put on my diagram here? So, well, if, do I want the proper diagram? No, I'm just doing problem solving, so let's just jump straight here. And in this case, I care about this guy, mg sine theta. I don't technically need this one, but we'll put it on there for now. 
your normal force equals mg cosine theta. And what additional force is acting on this object in this problem? And where does friction point? Good, up the incline. If this thing is not sliding down the incline, there must be a force counteracting that one that's equal in magnitude opposite in direction. <clears throat> and that's the situation we've got going on here. So in this new up and down the incline, the new x, if you will, some of the forces equals ma. And in this case, do we have an acceleration up and down the incline? No. no. And so in this case, we're in equilibrium, and the sum of the forces adds up to zero since there is no acceleration. And in this case, we'll say force of friction up the incline minus mg sine theta down the incline. So I made it negative in this case, equals zero. And so my force of friction is just equal to mg sine theta, uh, which in this case, 10 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared, sine of 30 is a half. And what do we get here? 49 newtons for a force, great. Now the second half of this question, what is the coefficient of friction? Well, first of all, I said coefficient of friction. Am I talking about static or kinetic in this case? Static. I'm talking about static, this thing is not moving. Okay, so our equation for force of friction static is force friction equals mu static times the normal force, but what's the important addition we should make here? Max. Max. So are we at the maximum for the force of friction? We have no way of knowing. We might be, we might not be. I think the odds are better that we're not, but we have no way of knowing. So we have no way of knowing if we're at that max. So can we actually get an actual value for the coefficient of static friction? No, all we can really say is that it needs to be at least a certain value or higher. So in this case, your force of friction is 49 newtons, if this were equal to mu s times the normal force. And notice what's your normal force equal to? mg cosine theta, in this case a cosine 30, right there. And so in this case, if it were at the max, then this would be, we'd be solving for the exact value of the static coefficient of friction here. And so in this case, somebody get me what that actually comes out to? Ooh, cosine of 30 is not a half. Yeah, 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 no worries. I'll round to 0.58. Again, no units on that. And so if we're at the max, then your coefficient of static friction is 0.58. What if we're not quite up to the max? Then what would we have to say? Yeah, so in this case, it could be greater than that as well. So we really could say that mu s is greater than or equal to 0.58. That's the most accurate statement we can actually make. All right, number nine says that an object slides down a 45 degree incline at constant velocity. Those words should stick out in your head. And the question is, what is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the object and the incline? Okay. So if I'm just working on doing some problem solving here, what should I write on my free body diagram? So I don't want the proper one in this case, just for problem solving purposes. Yeah, down the incline, mg sine theta. And the normal force is? Okay, any other forces we should be aware of here? Friction, which way is friction point? Yeah, got to have friction going here. And what can I say about friction here? It's kinetic, not static. This thing is moving. But I can say something a little more. Good, the force friction is equal to mg sine theta in magnitude because constant velocity. And if we're at constant velocity, we're in dynamic equilibrium. There's no net acceleration, no net force. And so you set up your equation in that direction, you'd get the sum of the forces equals ma, and in case it's zero again, 
with no acceleration at constant velocity. And so we'd say the force of friction minus mg sine theta equals zero, and your force of friction is equal to mg sine theta in magnitude. Okay, that's true. We also know that normal force equals mg cosine theta. Technically, we got that by saying that in this direction, there's no net acceleration. And so in the new y direction, some of the forces also equals ma, which equals zero in this case. And so we said normal force pointing out that way, component of gravity pointing the other way is mg cosine theta, and they add up to zero. And indeed, your normal force equals mg cosine theta. So obviously, we already had that little tidbit. I just wanted to remind you of where that actually came from. So what are we solving for here? Coefficient of kinetic friction. What's the formula for the force of kinetic friction? Force of friction is equal to times the, times the normal force, and that's equal to, again, still mg sine, and I'll put the angle in this time, 45. And our normal force here, we'll just substitute it right in. So here, mu k is going to equal mg sine 45, and we'll divide by our normal force, which is? mg cosine 45, and what magically disappears? MG. Mass and gravity. Why did the mass have to disappear? Because I didn't give you one in the problem, so hopefully it's not <laughs> necessary. <laughs> so what's mu k equal to then? Yeah. Tangent of 45 would be one way to say it, but sine and 45 and cosine of 45 are equal, and the tangent of 45 is indeed 1. Great.